Our final segment is called The Game, the game is, is Rigged. For the girls that mothers fighting for other serves, it can feel like the game is rigged against them because it is. Now, as you've seen, Rocky is doing her part to help unrig the game for them, but we thought it would also be fun to invite someone else on who can help her unrig it even more. You may know tonight's contestant from Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me or his TED Talk or because he held up the line in front of you at airport security. <laughs> his uh, Showtime special, I Come in Peace, is now available on iTunes and Netflix streaming. He has toured the world performing stand-up comedy and received accolades from such obscure figures as Queen Raina of Jordan and some dude named Barack Obama. It is <laughs> our very great pleasure to welcome to the stage Mr. Maz Jobrani. <laughs> Hello, welcome. Wow, that's thank you. Yes, that's very. It really sucks you in, so that you're stuck with us for a while. Yeah, not a lot of springs in this thing. Well, that's like that's like just the best for you. That's like a taxi in Beirut. It is. Um, thank you so much for being here. I know you normally would be spending this time with your family, so we really appreciate you coming and subjecting yourself to our very hard-hitting questions. I know. I'm excited. You. Thank you for having me. And uh, this is cool. It's funny. And then, and then you got a cause, and you got an audience. And hi, audience. Wow. Those are all uh, hi. And a band. <laughs> yes, those are all the elements and we need. Camera. And this guy got him. You're working hard. Yeah. <laughs> Take it easy, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you were actually a huge inspiration to us when we were planning this show, and your name came up a lot because we are trying to use comedy to sort of redirect the conversation about women, mm -hmm. and you have very successfully used comedy to change the conversation about Middle Easterners in the oh, Middle East. I thought you were saying about women. <laughs> <laughs> we know you don't care for women. Yes, so I know. <laughs> we Middle East. Have, we Middle wouldn't East. have talked yeah, yeah. about that. No. This is women? Forget it. I'm out of it. <laughs> You, you belong at the house! Right. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> right, so the point is you dispel stereotypes, is what we're saying. That's the goal, Well yes. done, yes. good job. Yes. Uh, do you think you might be our best chance for world peace at this time? I am trying. Um, <laughs> Have you been invited to Geneva at all recently? Well, Iran, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I was born in Iran and grew up here, mm -hmm. and so I could probably help there. But now you got this Ukraine thing. I can't. Yeah. I don't speak uh, Ukrainian. We'll Russian? have to put Kira <laughs> on that. That yeah, will be Kira. her job. Um, in the early 2000s, you were part of the Axis of Evil comedy tour, yes. which the name itself tells you about where ideas on the Middle East were at mm -hmm, the time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, how have you seen audience reactions change to you and the things you talk about over the last decade? Or have you? Um, they still hate me. <laughs> and, uh, no, no, no. Clearly. No, the audience is great. They've always been, it's been fun. I think a lot of people, uh, we don't give credit to people for, uh, for, for how much people know. A lot of people do know a lot. And so it was great when we did the Access of Evil comedy tour. Um, it was me and three other Middle Eastern Americans, and we would do stand-up, and the audiences were great, and they were totally in the know. And um, and, and what was what was good also was that uh, we never tried going into like we didn't go into like enemy territory necessarily, like you know we didn't do like, like a Texas Fox <laughs> sponsored show. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, Sean Hannity presents. <laughs> Like, We're not friends of mine slash uh, <laughs> suspects are uh, going to be profiled tonight. So we never did that. But but we had a chance to tour all over the world and perform. And a lot of people uh, get it. And I think, uh, and the other thing you realize is that comedy does, it translates pretty well, you know. And um, and so, uh, no, it's been good. And now I do material about my kids as well. Mm -hmm. So I was watching uh, the ladies earlier, and I know the girls, and they... Uh, there's funny stuff. So kids give you stuff. We can all we can all come together and hate kids. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean it's a very common cause. They really? do. All, they're yeah because they're high pitched, they you are. know, and that they tends are. to really help. I think that's where it's at right there. Yeah. 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 Uh, I saw an interview you did where you talked about how when you were a kid and you would do shows, you would play everything from Lil Abner to Batman, and then when you moved to Hollywood, you would only get auditions for Terrorist Number 3 with a turban. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, I bring that up primarily to see if you are still interested in playing Batman, because we could start a campaign for that tonight. Hashtag Batmoz. I think you would rock the bat suit. <laughs> Batmoz, I'm into it. I feel like, I mean, America was not kind to Ben Affleck, so they might be totally ready for something different. <laughs> Why not? Let's do this. No, I, it's, 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 well, that's what got me interested in acting, was as a kid, when you would do plays, you could play everything. And then you come to Hollywood, and then they go, can you say, I will kill you in the name of Allah? Yeah. And, well, I you could. Surprisingly good at that, Mons. Thank you. I will kill you in the name of Allah. Alarmingly. You know, Allah. <laughs> well, well done. Thank you. Uh, jokes like these got you invited to the White House, not by the Axis of Evil president, but the one after that. Yes. Um, what was Michelle like? Because she seems amazing. Well, you know, Michelle and I, uh, we had a conversation. No, when I got invited, you, a lot of people, it was, this, it was this holiday party, and a bunch of people got invited, and you think you're special. I didn't get invited. Well, you guys didn't. I, I was <laughs> not invited. But other and bunch I of think people. Michelle's amazing. Well, you totally should have come. And, and, <laughs> And what you do though is you go there and you think, oh, well, this is what is this a sit down with us? You know, my wife, me, me, my wife, you know, and Michelle and Barack, it's gonna be great. Mm -hmm. And then you go there and there's no, there's a bunch of people. And you go in and then they hand you this card with a time on it. And you're like, what's this? And they go, that's when you get to take your picture with the president. And that's literally, I had like three seconds. Here's your card. Exactly, that's the card. <laughs> and you have three seconds and, you go, and they line you up and you go all the way around. They're very nice. Everyone, when I, when I said I was going to this Christmas party, everyone had a message. Like, <laughs> I'm serious. Like my, I have, I, I have a, my Republican friend was like, tell him not to raise taxes. I like that that uh, was singular, by one, the way. There's one, there's one guy. Uh, my Republican friend. My Democrat friends all, uh, they, uh, they said, give him a hug. Uh, and my mom said, tell him I love him. Um, and that was the only message that got out. I said, my mom loves you. Oh, thank you. Tell your mother I love her too. And then I said, how do you know my mother? And, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but what was interesting actually was when we take the picture, they put us, like they separated us, so it's, you know, it's, I think it's, it's, you know, he's, no, actually we're in the middle and they're on the sides, and we walked away, you get one shot, you know, everyone, the, the camera's there, you go and you do this, and, and, and I was like, I'm not going to blow it, I'm ready to go. As we're walking away, my wife's like, I think I blinked. I go, what do you mean? She goes, he grabbed me. I go, what? <laughs> He grabbed you? She goes, yeah. He, I go, how dare he grab you and not me? He should have grabbed me. I got the invite. So. But Michelle Trumble, grabbed Trumble. you with her guns. She yeah, put her yeah, guns she, around you. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Good looking people. Yeah, Good looking. Very yeah. nice. nice. Yeah. Yes, yes, very nice. Um, <laughs> you recorded your stand-up special, I Come in Peace, in Sweden. Yes. Is that because Maz Jobrani is to Sweden what David Hasselhoff is to Germany? Yes, definitely. <laughs> I am. They call me the Night Rider in Sweden. <laughs> Why Sweden? For very different reasons. I, <laughs> I only, I only come out at night, and I, I just ride. In the a, land of the eternal sunshine. In the land of eternal sunshine, <laughs> and I ride my skateboard around town. They go, "There's the Night Rider." And, <laughs> And, uh, this took a very odd turn. That's really why. <laughs> and it's actually a German accent. It's a German guy. It's a German guy living in Sweden who thinks I'm David Hasselhoff, and he's very confused. <laughs> there he is. Where is Kurt? And um, a German guy with. Yeah, this is a very complicated story. No, I filmed it there because uh, I was going there to do shows. They're actually big comedy fans. Because this is what I learned afterwards. Um, uh, the Nordic countries, when they see Western film and television, they see it in English with subtitles. So mm -hmm. they speak English very well. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you go to like, like France and Spain and some of that, Italy, they, some people speak it well, but, but a lot of times uh, they dub it. So, you know, you, they're not going to get it, you know. <laughs> What's it? It's not right. Not right. What is that? You know? uh, I don't understand. It's not good. Um, <laughs> Life is not so beautiful. That's a 15-year-old <laughs> reference right there. Uh, he's a no Roberto um, Benigni. He's not like climbing on the chairs. Um, <laughs> these are all people that. Okay, thank you. Um, but it hadn't those, come out in Sweden yet. Yeah, is yeah. the thing. So. For, for those of you who weren't born then, you could like. You know, anyway, anyway um, yeah, I did it. It was in Sweden. It was cool. And here's this is a cool thing that happened. Uh, usually in my shows, uh, I, it's cool, I get a mixed crowd and I talk to the crowd, who's from here, who's from there, etc. And usually if there's like a Jewish person in the audience, I go, are there any Palestinians? 
and then I have them wave, and then say hello to each other. You are peace, I'm totally trying. Um, but this is. But what happened was, and usually they're not, you know, like ones here and ones there. And in Sweden, uh, they were seated next to each other, and I was like, only in <laughs> Stockholm, where the Nobel Peace Prize is given, where a Jew and an, and an Arab would sit next to each other. And, we and, had and then here. they And then they fought. Exactly. <laughs> we had we had a Jew oh, and an you, Iranian I do, oh, yes. right Wait, next I'll to each other. I'm telling you, my brother. I'm telling you, yes, you please. get us to Geneva. I'm saying. Thank you so much. You know the president. We can make this happen, Let's Mas. Make it happen. Um, we're it's our work beyond is done. helping children. We're world peace is our new goal. Well, yeah, yeah. That, we're that's speaking when you know, small. Yeah, that's when you know the show's not quite defined yet. <laughs> Every show we just kept changing our thing. Midway and, through, depending yeah. on what we thought we could accomplish. Yeah. Um, on a more serious note, yes. so we have been. Speaking tonight about people going to great lengths for children that they care about, and I imagine that's something you can relate to because your parents immigrated here during mm -hmm. a time of political upheaval, which yes. could not have been easy. The revolution of 1979, yes, of Correct. Iran. And now you have two children yeah. of your own. Was, there might have been another revolution. <laughs> I don't want to upset somebody, you know, some guy in the back. Algeria had one too. My parents heard about it. They were very upset. <laughs> they were like, Let's I would get never to go America. to that show again. They insulted the revolution of 79 in Algeria. <laughs> Gone off the rails. Uh, <laughs> but given your family history and that you do have two children of your yes. own now, do you sort of feel an extra responsibility to make sure they understand the advantages they have and what it took for them to be able to have yeah, a father who's I'm, going to bring about world peace? Well, I mean, there's still, there's five-year-old, there's three and five. No, so they but they understand, Yeah, right? they kind of are. <laughs> I sit them down every day. I sit them down. I show them. Uh, you uh, do Iranian Revolution puppet shows. I show, <laughs> yeah, here's the Khomeini. And then, uh, <laughs> And here's the show, and he's chasing him out. And he's, yeah, he's going to America. And then there's the hostages. I totally should do that. <laughs> the finger puppets for each of the hostages. That's the best idea I've heard in a long time. I'm going to start that every Friday night at this theater. <laughs> Fantastic. The Revolution Puppet Show. It's great. I love it. Um, all right, well. <laughs> so our, your some, show just changed some, again. Someday, do you feel like you might? No, I try. I actually, I was actually asking Rocky about this earlier because what she does, I asked her, I said, well, you know, you have kids. I go, when did you teach them to appreciate and, and volunteer? And she said, you know, they, they're obviously immersed in it. And so I try, I've tried. The, the closest I've come so far, uh, the five-year-old, I told him, I tell him about appreciating things. I say, you got to appreciate stuff. I guess, you, you know, you have things, but some people don't have things. And, uh, and then I, I told him, you know, you know, sometimes you see homeless people give money and stuff. And it was actually very sweet one time because we live across the street from a 7-Eleven and I was walking with the two of them to go, I don't know what I was getting, a Kit Kat or something. Um, and as we were approaching, he said, Daddy, do you, have, do, you have a, do you have a dollar? And I was like, and I forgot about it. And I was like, sure. And he goes, can I have it? I go, sure. And, he, and I gave it to him. He walked over and gave it to the homeless guy. And I was That's like, well, nice. that is really nice. You know how to give daddy's money away. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah. but I'm hoping it sinks, sinks in. I really want them to appreciate it, especially that we live in L.A. and the privileged life that mm -hmm. we live. I mean, I honestly, I, I've thought about this. Uh, I think that one of the biggest thing, one of my biggest pet peeves is when teenagers complain in America. And I think there should be a study abroad program where mm -hmm. every kid has to go live somewhere else and mm -hmm. see how. And there, what would be great, actually, thank you, you can clap one person. <laughs> <laughs> I Who is think, starting a study abroad How about program? a law that when a teenager complains in America, you can drive them to the airport, they gotta go live in a third world country for a year, yeah. and then come back and complain, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That'd be, right? Like, yeah. have them actually go play with like real angry birds, like for a year. <laughs> <laughs> Actual angry birds. Actual angry birds. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, well, I tell you this all the time, but I will say it for the benefit of our audience. You are not only one of the most kind and generous people I've ever met, you are also the hardest working, and you deserve every bit of success you have had. We wish you nothing but more success with everything Thank you, you do going forward. Thank you. Except for this game. Okay. You bring me down. Yeah. <laughs> Except for the game you're about to play, because it's rigged. See, now he's zooming in. So, Look, he's finally working. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to play The, the game, game is Rigged! If you answer, I go ahead and grin. Just keep in mind that you won't win. Losing should never cause you shame, because you know we break the game. <clears throat> so, 
Maz, you understand that the game you're about to play is rigged, correct? I understand, Your Honor, yes. Try, try, try as you may. We really do want you to try. No matter what, you're going to lose it. Is that clear? I think I can win this thing. <laughs> Very good. I like that you Perfect. Think. So knowing that no matter what you wager, you are going to lose, how much are you willing to wager that you can win this game? I'm going to bet $100. Woo! Woo! Good. Not Fantastic. All right. This game is called You've Got Umlaut of Nerve. <laughs> <clears throat> Did you say Und? Umlaut, umlaut. Like, umlaut, like the dots, because oh. you recorded your stand-up special in Sweden, oh, well, and I'm, you use oh. comedy to dispel stereotypes, mm. so we've created a game about stereotypes about Sweden. Oh. See what we did there? Wow. Okay, and they have a lot of umlauts, umlauts. on their words, so umlaut of nerve. Okay, umlaut. we're going to read you six rhymes, mm -hmm. and you fill in the word or words that belong at the end of each. For sure. example, if I said, these 70s singers were the darlings of pop, with songs like Dancing Queen No One Could Stop, sung by everyone, even Yo Gabba Gabba. This Swedish foursome is best known as... ABBA! Very good. Well done. Well done. I feel like you guys are hustling me right now. <laughs> okay. so easy. It is called The Game Is So. Yeah, all right, here we go. Each missing word or phrase is something that comes to mind when you think of Sweden, or when we do, mm -hmm. and the first two lines are a clue, and the third line might be a clue, or it might just be words that rhyme with the answer, because not a lot of Swedish phrases are particularly Susian, so. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Ready? Here we go. Okay. okay. Pronounced in Sweden, Shatfular. Ooh. What? What just Ooh. happened? I don't, I don't know, know, but I hear something. We're Should being we attacked by the me? Swedish. Is that me? Are we okay? Here, let's They're try like, that. Oh, we don't rhyme? We were sure. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Pronounced in Sweden, shut bular. Don't drop one or it may roll far. It just doesn't want me to say this. Um, they're tiny, tasty little heat stalls. We speak, of course, of Swedish. Meatballs. Yeah. Yay! Okay, that was oh. worth one point. Very good. Oh, how many do I have to get? 300. Okay. <laughs> My varums by my Billy Benno, but just where should my Inga Torp go? <laughs> Extra dowel, you know I see ya when I buy prefab from IKEA. Yay! <laughs> that was worth ten points. Wow! So coming along nicely. Oh my goodness! You're up to eleven. Uh, my chalk isn't working. There we go. Eleven. Oh, eleven. Thank you. I Your was math working. isn't working. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try this little one. All right, nice. that'll just have to All do. Right. There we go. <laughs> Murder, leather, chains and whips. Sexual obsession and Australian trips. A cinematic pearl Mr. Sagan sat through. Stieg Larsson's... Mm. Pearl Murder, Mr. Sagan sat through. Stieg Larsson's... Larson's. Uh, I'm a Does woman, but if I it? was younger. The girl with the dreads. Yes. The girl oh, with the dreads. Yeah, I didn't see it. I didn't yeah, see it. Yeah, that I... was worth 20, so now oh. you're at minus 9. Oh. It's not. It's not looking good for you at this oh, time. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> to quote him, Flurg and Durg and Dork, Erg de Schmerg de Bork, Bork, Bork. <laughs> it's a quote. <clears throat> Neither doctor nor lawyer nor fireman nor ref. He's the Muppets' top cook. He's the famed Swedish chef. Yay! Very good. That was worth half a point because <laughs> it's not really Swedish. It's a Muppet. It's a Muppet. Wow. <laughs> the hostage's plight, ties that bind, Patty Hearst. Defending your jailers is truly the worst. Stranger than fiction or a rock gnome's chim foam, it's a condition known as... The Stockholm Syndrome. Woo! Well done! That was worth 8.5 points. So this is for all of it. Here we go. <laughs> Diplomat, economist, Nobel Prize winner. Get this one correct and we'll all buy you dinner. Big in the 50s, he could snog, slam, or scold UN Secretary General. Don't say it! <laughs> <laughs> he 
UN Secretary General, wait. The hmm. person in the audience who knows it, stand up and say it out loud. Wait, yeah. give Maz Everybody a chance. Yeah. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get it. That was nice. That was worth 300 points. You could have won, but you did not. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Dog Hammarskjöld. Dog Hammarskjöld. Everyone thinks of him when they think of Sweden, correct? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, Maz. I'm afraid you did not win, and you will be donating your $100. But you should not feel bad, because after all, the game, the game was rigged. Yes. Well, thank you, guys. You lost the game. You'll pay the price. Losing never felt so nice. Your reputation, there's no stain because your loss is. Mother's fighting for others is. Yay! Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Maz Joe Brown. Thank you. 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 Now it is time for a bonus that is for our live audience only.